Hello, everyone. Welcome into the light box. It's Monday. Yay. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is. You know, I start this. Jeremy, do you know what my problem is? No. Do you think I'm crazy? Maybe. <laughs> Jeremy, do you think I'm crazy? Maybe. <laughs> All right. So I'm down at Jeremy's house and we are so excited about our sale tomorrow. Uh, we're a little stressed out. We're trying to get ready. Uh, we want to have a magnificent show, and we hope it goes really well, right? We want to sell everything, but we want to keep our prices fair and reasonable. Um, I don't know if this video is going to air before the sale or after, <laughs> so hopefully it airs before. But if not, uh, we are so excited and hope you all can join us. Um, I guess I have like... I have, like, grass all over my hands. How did I get grass all over my hands? Now I'm distracted by my hands. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. And uh, Jeremy is delighted because he currently, I think when I checked, he had, like, 200 subscribers. 200 subscribers. Uh, Jeremy is delighted. So thank you all for making registration very easy for our first sale. Anyways, um, what I'm here to talk about today is somehow... Um, to tell you that I never doubted my intuition in business. I never doubted myself. And I always knew that I would somehow find success and profits in what I did. And I have this note on my desk and it says, trust your intuition and follow your path. Um, and Jeremy is living this as well. I encourage all of you to trust your intuition and follow your path in life because that's basically what we're born to do. Now, getting to the money part of that, how I kind of wanted to settle in today, I wanted to show you some of the things that I purchased. And this is a Vendome set. It's in its original box, Vendome, V-E-N-D-O-M-E. And I forgot to welcome everyone in. I was so excited to get this started. And like I said, we're kind of all set up for the sale. We're very well prepared. So I wanted to make sure that I got another video up. Uh, just in case, you know, I was a little bit behind on some of my videos and I'm down at Jeremy's house and the cats are running around and unfortunately there's someone sawing down trees in the background. So please just ignore the uh, chainsaw. This is signed Vendome. The bracelet is signed Vendome and the necklace is signed Vendome and this is a blue Aurora Borealis uh, crystal and then these cabochon glass stones in a teardrop form. The bracelet is signed Vendome. The necklace is signed as well on the back. And um, the earrings are both signed. The set is in remarkable condition. I purchased this um, directly from a um, residency, from an estate sale. And I am here to tell you about some pricing. So I bought this for $150 uh, when I bought it. And I had it out for retail sale at $650. So you might say to yourself, well, that's an awfully large increase. And in fact, it is. Because is it worth the $650 as a three-piece set? The answer is yes. Um, I think I will get it. I just haven't really um, made much effort in trying to liquidate this recently. Had it out for sale at a couple shows because it's a specialty item. If it eventually doesn't go local, I will definitely put it onto my eBay store. And I used eBay to sell such complete sets because finding them is getting very, very difficult. So I would go with a retail sale here local. If it doesn't work out, I never get discouraged. And I don't like to repeat a lot of things locally. There are some dealers who struggle to sell because they always have the same merchandise out. So my advice to a reseller on a local level, please maintain fresh merchandise and don't let things sit for very long. All right, so that's what I could tell you on that one. And then we'll skip on to, let's see if I could scoot this out of the way. We'll skip on to this brooch. This was listed on one of my uh, retail selling sites. I believe this was on Ruby Lane back in the day. And uh, this is five inches across, 29.6 grams. So when I bought things from, let's say, you know, flea market, a state sale auction, I would come home and I would get them um, totally priced and ready to go. And I loved this brooch. 
Sterling silver, genuine amber, very sizable. I love the quality of the stone. And what I did with my business that I would highly encourage other people to do, buy artistic and unusual pieces. It's okay to spend a little bit more money. Back in the day, let me see here. So I had this out for sale at $350. And um, I think I probably have around $80 invested. So the $80 investment... You know, put it out at 350 and come down to, you know, 285 or 280. So then that way you're making a profit of almost $200. It's well worth it on something like this. Just my opinion. Very artistic. You can see that it's artisan created. Solid sterling silver, completely hand fabricated and in wonderful condition. The pin stem sneaks out of there. Beautiful, beautiful stone, and I love this asymmetrical design. So let that be a lesson and a little bit of the profit. Now, when I, let me do this, when I would sell this, and let's say on a bad day, I would say to someone, I would take 280. Well, I could say if they offered 150, and I'd had it out a couple times, I would take that. I would take the 150 to move it along and say, um, I'll take that 150 and I'll take the profit loosely of, let's say, you know, let's say maybe $70. I'll take the profit of 70 and go out and buy. Let's take a look here. See if I bought anything in this box for 70. And then I can kind of give you the additive process of how I continued um, to, you know, make money. This one wasn't 70, but this is very inexpensive. So of, let's say I took the $70. I bought this one for um, $18 and I put it out at 75. Um, well, I was going to put it out at 75 at the antique mall I was in. Never made the showcase. That's a genuine smoky quartz set in a gold plated flower. Beautiful construction, beautiful concept on this and a giant smoky quartz stone. Just that stone would cost me $50 or more at a gem, uh, gem uh, trade center, you know, a, uh, a gemological uh, shop, if you will, or a lapidary shop. Beautiful proportions on that stone. So that'll sell right away. So a portion of that $70, right, that I took with profit from my last one, bought this for 18 so I still had over $50 left to reinvest. If this sells for 75 then I made a profit of about $50, OK, so then, you know, then again, so let's say I have the $50 that was remaining from the first investment, add it to the $50 on this one. I have $100 profit to go out and spend. It's like, you know, pulling the arm of a slot machine, <laughs> but it's not that much of a risk. So let's say this one. Right. So of the $100 I put. Uh, this is a Nettie Rosenstein. It's Bakelite. It's a flower. I hope this video is coming across okay and isn't too confusing. What I should do is I should write down on a tablet, you know, the $50 and the $50, you know, profit margin on the, the other pieces once they sell and then go out and, you know, I have 100 to spend. I think this one was... 30 or 35 dollars and i bought this in a large collection and i figured it in at 30 or 35 dollars this is a very rare and unusual netty rosenstein carved bakelite flower pin it's all complete it looks like some of the leaves were chipped they're not that's the way they're carved it's a carnation flower look how deeply carved that is for bakelite so that's amber bakelite. It's not lucite. That's all hand carved and then set in this remarkable gold filled mounting. And it's a carnation flower. Sign Nettie Rosenstein measures three inches by two inches by one inch. And uh, my, my, my method for getting ready for our sale was to measure everything. So that's why this uh, kind of came, you know, to the surface for videos is I remembered inventorying all of these. So getting ready for our sale put me in the mindset of this video. So I think I paid 30 or 35. And look, I had it out for retail sale. I believe that was on Ruby Lane at the time for $250. And I'm no longer on Ruby Lane. Um, I left that website, oh, uh, I 
think probably about uh, eight years ago now. Uh, but I had been on there for, I believe I was on there for nine years total. But this is beautiful for Nettie Rosenstein. I expect to sell this for 250 I would well imagine it's not, it's not going to last long once I put it out because that's an incredible Nettie Rosenstein um, carved bake light. Uh, it looks so real. Uh, very, very cool. So anyway, so the $35 to $250. So look, I have about $220 to go out and buy something. So it was an additive process in this whole time. I also paid my bills during this journey. This one came basically free in an estate. I had zero dollars in this. I believe that I put it out at maybe two something. I don't remember on this one. Uh, maybe it was 200. Let's take a look here. This was out for a while. Yeah, $200 on this one. Jeremy helped me reprice some of these things back in the day. These are natural blue sapphire and the metal is gold plated and those are natural rubies in the eyes of this gigantic spider. Very fun, very whimsical, but gigantic sapphires that are natural. Very, very large sapphires that are natural. And when I first looked at it, I thought they were aquamarine, but they're not. I believe that they're in the sapphire family. And maybe, just maybe, maybe I have that wrong. No, I don't think I do. Um, I think those are sapphire. I'll have to take a, a, another look at that, but I believe that they're sapphire. Either sapphire or aquamarine. Uh, but I think I, I remember back in the day, this has been, oh, this has been a long time. That's an A code. Uh, and I coded all my items so I knew what I spent on them. So then I would know my profit margins. But $0 out and $200 in. So if it sells for $100, I'd still be happy. But I know that it will sell for the 200 because it's absolutely awesome. These things haven't been out. Um, most of these haven't been out for a very long time. So, um, oh, no, here comes Morris the Cat. Morris the cat is uh, closing in over here. Bought this one, um, eight one uh, fifteen, and it was three hundred and fifty dollars. And this was out of a collection in Seville, Ohio. So please remember, go to different, um, you know, go to different sources when you try and find these items. Uh, you know, how I feel about the word source, but I'm saying go to different locations. This had the pin mechanism soldered back on. The frame is um, 14 karat gold on the outside of the frame. On the inside, I think that is um, silver. But on this outside rope twist, uh, that's 14 karat gold. Look at the size of this cameo. And this is antique. This is definitely antique. Just has been re-soldered here and here. We forgive that. Great bail soldered in place. So you can wear it as a pendant. Look how unusual that cameo is. And that's gigantic. I loved the dragon on the headpiece, and I loved the scepter, loved the detail, the hair and the necklace and that, you know, suit of armor. Look at that little front view face, almost like a sun or a moon on the front view there. Really incredible. You know, reminiscent of Athena, not or Minerva. I think this might be a depiction of Minerva, uh, one of the uh, several different variations. But look how they carved that eye to make that look so realistic. Beautiful depiction, wonderful composition, and I think, yeah, 350 and I put that one out at 1500 That had been out for a long time because you can see how the red faded once it was in the showcase at the Antique Mall. The A code definitely was, uh, I think that one was slightly uh, older uh, from where I bought that in Seville. So I coded everything as well. I wasn't really a stickler keeping track of the profits on certain pieces. And I guess why is I once said that any profit in the business would be a success. And I think that's why I'm still in business because some dealers didn't have that mentality. They held out for maximum money. And when they did that, um, you know, sometimes, you know, waiting for the great pumpkin, it doesn't come. And we know that by watching a cartoon back in the day, right? So 8.9 grams, 14 karat gold. This one is exceptional. Um, I had this one out at 27.50, um, and I know that uh, I will get at least, you know, at least 1,500. Let me move this out of the way. This is the original box, I believe. No, this wasn't. I yeah, no, I don't think this was the original box. It may have been. I'll have to look that up in my notes. But these are all fancy colored diamonds. So these are orange and uh, kind of ornish, orange brown fancy colored diamonds framed in white in solid 14 karat gold. Look at that mounting, how beautiful that's put together. So um, I always tried to buy things that were artistic and unusual 
as the chainsaw continues to get louder in the background, and I hope you can continue to hear me over it because, boy, that's not ambient noise. That's just annoying. <laughs> so um, I loved that ring, and so the profit margin there will be severe because I believe I put out um, 300 or $400 in that, and I was like, that's a definite yes because the profit margin was definitely there for me. Now on the flip side of that, sometimes my margins were much closer and I wanted to cover that as well because a lot of you have asked. I paid $150 for this one and this is ancient Roman glass that's been set in this sterling silver um, necklace and it's so incredible because when you see these, let me show you one that they normally look like. I put 250 on that, that's way too low. That's just in extremely way too low on something like that. But I wanted the quick flip, I think, you know? This one I paid 184 and I bought it in a lot of jewelry, but this one is much more complex for ancient Roman glass. And again, thanks for bearing with me because these things haven't been out in a long time, but this is more complex, much more of a complex design I wish I could zoom out, but it's not going to happen. I'll kind of scoot these out of the way so you can see them better. But this one um, I had coded um, for $425, and I paid $180. So my profit margin was not that extreme on this one. You know, I think that's a fair price on this one. I think this one's a little low. But look at the way this is constructed with these ancient Roman glass pieces that, yes, are glued into their sterling silver mountings. Um, and then... It's so beautifully done with these really early pieces of ancient Roman glass. And I'll do a video on um, ancient Roman glass jewelry. A lot of it was set in Israel. Um, and that's very unusual because of, you know, trade lines. But look at that tassel design. It's almost like um, a mobile or a wind chime, you know. But I loved that design that that would hang on the neck and be so dimensional um, with that secondary drop. Original chain. And look at the labor that it took. Jeremy, you still doing okay? Yep. Yeah, Jeremy's just working on coffee orders um, in the background. He's, uh, he had two coffee, or no, one, no, he had two coffee sales uh, Sunday night, uh, and he's working on that now, and I think he had one this morning, so he's a busy beaver getting coffee orders ready, um, and I just appreciate his patience with me taking up some space in the house uh, and literally driving him crazy <laughs> this morning. So uh, this one's ancient Roman glass, and you can see that these are shards from much larger pieces. That was likely the base of a cup or a goblet, and then the stem would come up here, or it was the opposite direction. It was some sort of vessel. And then these are just raised ridges from some sort of dish or some sort of vessel again. You know, that raised ridge. But those are ancient Roman glass uh, that were, you know, they're ancient Roman shards that someone so carefully set in sterling. This one might be signed Israel. Let me see. Yeah, it's signed. So that one said in Israel, you can see the remaining letters there, uh, and then 925. So that one was definitely made in Israel from, again, ancient Roman glass. And uh, let me lay this one down and show you. So just wanted to show you some beautiful things today, kind of discuss a little bit about profit margins. And then I do want to do a video. I think this has been done before, but I'm going to do it Jason's way. So I'm going to say to myself, I'm going to start my day at the flea market for like $200. You know, what I think, you know, most people that try to resell, to, maybe they bring two to 300 to the flea market. You know, I'm going to start with 200 and show you the process of a day of shopping with me. Like, what could I turn $200 into? Right. So if I spend 200, what did I buy? What am I going to sell it for? Wait until it sells. Right. Because perspective or potential money isn't real money. So I'll have to sell the pieces and then show you, this is what I spent, this is what I sold, and then this is my profit that I'm going to go shop with again. And then show you how exponentially I grew my business through the profits of what I was buying and selling. You know, Not very many, I don't know if I should say this, but not very many businesses are kind of based on that kind of thing. It's more predictable. You know, you buy a dozen eggs, you make an omelet, you have a restaurant, and it's a finite and a fixed 
you know, a fixed profit, you know, very predictable. Eggs is this, and omelet is this, and this is your profit. Eggs is this, and omelet is this, this is your profit. You know, bacon, sausage, and something, you make a, a sandwich, and then this is your profit, you know. Um, you know, so restaurants have more of a predictable, and I, I choose restaurants because that's the easiest for me to put my brain around. But you know the same thing, you know, like Target and the retail stores and the box stores, they have a TV. This is their profit margin. It's a finite amount. You know, they have to sell a certain amount of that. In mine, it was very unusual because it was always some interesting piece like this. So I bought this one at an estate sale. This one's 14 karat gold um, and emerald. One of the most amazing, amazing rings. And I think this was an estate sale. I think. I go back to this and I always wonder if I have this one right. Sometimes I get confused on this one. 14 karat gold, 22.6 grams. And I bought this in the collection. I spent, let me see by my code. I spent uh, on this ring in the collection. I figured it in at $400 back then or $450. Very close. Look how sizable and gigantic for a jade ring. It is a monster and like the best of its kind. Um, just incredible gold work, uh, amazing ring, four shanks and gigantic. And again, I tried to get 2,800, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because on a bad day I would take, um, I would take a thousand, um, and the 22 grams, um, in today's gold value, we're going to be pretty close. We're going to be pretty close to margins of scrap. So maybe I'd settle for 11 or 12 to protect this so it wasn't going to be melted down. You know, um, scrapping such things is easy, an easy way out. I don't take the easy way out. I preserve these things and I try my best to find the right home for them. So I hope that helps for a little bit of profit margins. Um, and then I'll just show you some of the other pieces um, that I had found and hope I gave you enough information on that without overwhelming you. This is a portrait miniature painted on porcelain. Very important gentleman, incredibly important gentleman here. Um, painting on porcelain, so carefully painted. Look at the detail of the eyes and the shadow. So remarkably well done with that sky, the moody sky behind him. This regal sword, his armor, his gold, his robe, the, the detail on the cuff on the sleeve. As an artist, I get lost in detail. This fold here, the cast shadow, the way that's handled. I'll let you take that in. Look at the goodness of that and look at the surface. You can see that it's hand painted and uh, there's no pixels. Those are just little, little shaded dots that are painted on there. So those are not pixels that are printed. That's completely hand painted all the way through and through. Brush strokes, look at the light across the surface. All brush strokes all the way through that. An additive process to make this incredible portrait miniature. I'd like to do a video on this all by itself, I think. Modern 14 karat gold, uh, and I had that one out for 1500. Um, that was out for a while. The E-code was uh, an early one in my inventory for the Antique Mall. And I had been a dealer at the Antique Mall uh, there, I think, for 16 years. Um, and I had been in Antique Malls for over 22, uh, 23 years, I'm sorry, uh, 23 years of, uh, you know, selling retail at Antique Malls. And I had such a good uh, career with it. Uh, this one's amazing. This one's 18 karat gold and ruby. I show you some of the more standout pieces that I invested in, that I was able to do that additive process, you know, buy it for 20, sell it for 50, take the profit of 30, go back, spend the 30, sell for 60, you know, or, or 90, take that profit of $60, return, you know, make that 60 become easy, you know, I don't know, um, maybe I had a really good day and that 60 turned into 300, right? Then I took that 300 and I had 240 in profit. So take that 240, double that, you know, that's what, 480, you know? So like the additive process, I guess I'm trying to explain it that even though through that I was paying bills, I was putting gas in my car. I was buying groceries. I was paying for insurance, you know. So all those deductions, that's why I wasn't bashful to say, I want $2,500 for this, you know. Just in its weight, it's 18 grams times, I don't know, maybe today's price is 50 some dollars a gram, maybe. So how wrong was I? I, I wasn't that wrong, especially with the artistry of some of these pieces. So 
I'm going to take a sip of coffee because I'm going to let it dry it out today. Jeremy, how you doing? Great. What do you have to tell our fans and our adoring family that we love? I hope you're ready for us. Jeremy said he hopes he's, you're ready for us because we are so excited. Um, we have a good feeling, Jeremy, don't we? We really do. We try to keep the prices down on what we were selling. Jeremy, what are you eating? Nuts. <gasps> are those the honey roasted toffee ones? Are those the ones that I bought you and told you not to eat? Yes. He said yes. You know, and that's why I yell at my bear. <laughs> that's why. I really don't. Do we ever fight, Jeremy? Not really. Not really. No, we don't. Um, it's been nine years. What's there to fight about, you know? I don't know why I don't know why couples fight. I never figured that one out, you know? It's not worth the fight, you know? Just say, hey, I don't like you today because I don't like myself today. <laughs> and then go sit on a swing set, you know? Go on a jungle gym, you know, swing it out. Do something positive, you know, but everyone's always ready for the fight, you know, knock it off. <laughs> That's all I can say to you. Knock it off. It's not worth the fight, but I would rather, wouldn't you rather go on swing sets than fight with people? Yeah. Oh, are you bringing me some? Ooh, yummy. Look, oh, toffee peanuts. Yum, yum. That's a paid promotion, isn't it? Do you think I could get money? Oh, oh my God, they're so good. Mm -hmm. Do you like them? Do you? Jeremy said he likes them. Okay. So now that I'm going to spit peanuts all over everything. Um, yeah, I have no shame in my game. I really don't. Um, you know, when I started on YouTube, in my first video, I was quiet. And I was calm. Why are you laughing? And I was normal. Fake news. And I was pretending. Jeremy said fake news. I was pretending. Like, I was, I was pretending. I almost tried to kid myself. Here I go. I made it to 25 minutes and 39 seconds. And guess what happens? I don't know. I go bananas. I don't know why it's always around the 20 minute mark that the wheels fall off. You know, thank God I'm not around an old wagon anymore. You know, the wheels fall off of such things. This is 18 karat gold. And um, these are bezel set ruby and pave set diamonds. This is su such an architectural, beautiful design. And yeah, this ruby is, um, you know, heavily flawed, but it was going for a star ruby. I loved the flaws in this ruby. I loved the shape of that ruby. I love the internal quality of that stone. That's just me. You know, is it perfect? Nope. Did I love it because it was far from perfect? Yep. I have a tendency to love things that aren't perfect. Um, I don't know why, but in my mind... Um, I think this is perfect. You know, I think those stones are absolutely gorgeous. It is a size six and a half. Um, and like I said, um, $2,500. And I don't remember what I paid, but it wasn't much. Uh, maybe I don't know on that one. I, I don't want to comment because I don't know on that one. This one, I got lucky at an auction. And I said I wasn't going to bring this up um, and, and, you know, say what I paid for things. But I'm going to. This was sold as gold filled. It was in a lot um, for $400, and um, I had it out at one point for $17.85. I had it out on uh, Ruby Lane. Yeah, I had this out on Ruby Lane. There's my V code, V518. Uh, so I had, at that point, 518 items on Ruby Lane on a retail sale. It's 51 grams. It's 14 karat gold, um, and it's solid. And these normally are not 14 karat gold. These are normally gold filled. Uh, there is some, um, you know, there is some oxidation on that. So someone would say, oh, no, that's gold filled. No, 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 no. This one is solid 14 karat gold. And I had this sold. And then the person, you know, kind of put some money down on it. And then they decided they had other bills to pay. I'm kind of glad this never sold. So that's solid 14 karat gold. There's, I'll have to bring this on and do another video on this. But yeah, this was in, I remember this now. And I don't think I had this on my channel before. Um... 19 inches chain, under a half inch on that, and the front pendant is an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter. Beautiful amethyst and seed pearled, uh, seed pearl, black tracery enamel. And what I loved about this is, look at the hidden clasp. So you push that down, uh, and that's the way you get it on. And both sides come out because you could probably use, oh, thank you, Jeremy. You just brought me my pop. Um, thank you so much. Um, and then you can see that, yeah, that uh, maybe had, oops, that maybe had a, um, uh, yeah, that maybe had another pendant that it attached to. And uh, I will get that cleaned up because, yeah, that's just a little oxidation 
on the gold, and that's okay. Right by the solder seam as well. So someone would say, well, that's not a gold solder seam. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's an old one. Uh, this would be around 18... I always leave out the, uh, the dates of things. This would be around 1870... Between 1870 and 1880. Um, and it's called a book chain. Um, technically, that's called a book chain. That one's 14 karat gold. And I'm glad it didn't sell for 1785. Because if you do the scrap gold price today, which I guess I could calculate... Um, Hey, Jeremy, could you calculate something for me real quick? Just a roundabout price. Jeremy's going to grab his phone. Just let me know when you're ready. I'm going to tell you guys this because I think I can kind of do it. Rough estimate. I think gold's, what, 2400 So let's say, give me a minute, Jeremy. Do um, 51 times um, 51 times 40 or 42. Ready? Yeah. 2040. So on its worst day, this is 2040. Could you do, did you do 35 or 38? Did I tell you? Do you don't know? Oh, I don't know what I told you. Seven. Um, 51 times 30. 51 times 40. Oh, times 40? Oh, great. That is right. Could you do times 42 real quick? It won't be that much more. That would only be another $100 maybe. So 2140. 2140. I'm so bad at math. 2,142. Okay, 2,142. So yeah, I was okay with math. Oh wow, look at me go. I'm Einstein. I'm really not. I hate numbers. So yeah, it would be... I'm glad it didn't sell for 1785 because guess what? Um, this is um, now about $2,000 worth of gold. Okay? So uh, yeah, we'll have to... Um, yeah, we'll have to uh, do a little bit more research on that, reweigh it, and I'm just grateful. And uh, from the $400 that the lot cost, I think I sold the rest of it for seven. Seven seventy-five from memory, so like three hundred dollars profit, and then this for free. So like I got this for free. Um, it was a great day. Now those days don't happen all the time, but I want to encourage you. I want to encourage all of you to go and find those days, um, and I want to encourage you to do that. Just a whole bunch more jewelry stuff in here that I don't know what else I should show. Well, this is interesting. I'll show you this one. Never got a chance to do full research on this. But um, me and Jeremy are all caught up with our work for tomorrow, and uh, I have a little bit of extra time. So this was an e-inventory code. This was at the Antique Mall for a while. I only had this priced at $200. And I know why it didn't sell. It didn't sell for several reasons. How many people need a sterling silver bridge set? Because this is uh, for bridge, you know, for playing bridge, for playing cards. Um, how many people need a sterling silver bridge set in its original fitted box from England, by the way, for Abercrombie and Fitch Company. So what on earth is happening there, right? So made in England for Abercrombie and Fitch Company. And it's the sterling silver bridge pencils that are sterling silver. And look how fantastic these are with their original tassels. So you have, obviously, like it would be the red team and the black team, you know? So these were your pencils to tally and keep track of whatever you need to keep track of while you're playing cards. All the way around each pencil, there's the club, there's the diamond, there's the spade, and there's the heart, right? So you have all the symbols in solid sterling silver with their original tassels that are color-coded. These would have been much more red back in the day. And look how those have faded. I always talk about aniline dyes and dyes and fabric, um, and I love seeing when, um, when colors fade to that. So I know, you know, I just, I don't know. Then I know the age of uh, fibers and fabric when I see them. I would guesstimate that this would be right around the 1920s-ish, you know, give or take. You know, is it the 20s? I just put basically circa 1920s bridge pencil set in box for 200. And I'll, I'll be honest, um, these were out, I think these were out for sale at the mall for quite some time. They didn't sell. So guess what? I packed them up, brought them home, and I'm happy to have them. I really am. I think when I bought these, uh, it was $25. Yes, it was $25 when I bought these. So there's a um, bit more of a profit margin. This one I bought at a pawn shop, and I probably shouldn't have bought it, but I'm an emotional buyer. You know, I'll admit it. When I'm an emotional buyer, 
I admit it to everybody. This one's 18 karat gold, coral and diamonds. And I hope you've all stayed with me because this is a heck of a brooch. And I should have done a teaser in the beginning of the video to get everyone to come through the whole video. So I hope you're still watching. And for those that are, congratulations, because look at this monster. 18 karat gold, internally flawless diamonds. Really beautiful. Bought this at a pawn shop. Again, I had the paper with it. I think in another video, I may have said I bought it at an estate sale. I can tell you for sure this came from a pawn shop. Uh, and it was out in Hartville. Um, and I really loved this because it's monstrous, but it's so elegant. Uh, solid 18 karat gold, really beautiful diamonds. And my friend Linda was with me the day that I bought this. And she nudged me and said, you got to buy it or I'm going to buy it. You know, um, and so I bought it. But look how massive that is for an 18 karat gold, you know, coral and diamond brooch. And the diamonds are magnificent. I will do a video on cut, color, clarity and carat weight of diamonds, the four C's. I will do a video on that because a lot of you have asked for that information as well. And you know how I do this. I don't like to give you a lecture. I like to give you a practical guide so you can go out and make as you know much money as I have. You know, why not? I want you to be successful. And I want you to be able to find beautiful things. Uh, and I think that's what this uh, world has given me. Uh, it's given me the opportunity to acquire such beautiful things. I think I paid $1,500 or $1,600. I tried to sell it for $3,200 and I still have it. You know, it's going to take a special person. You know, this isn't, you know, an every person kind of thing. So again, an exceptional, um, an exceptional piece, shall I say. And I did put it on that little purple uh, purple satin or purple organza pillow just because I think it really offset the color of the pink. And I loved the flow of this. I loved that uh, very Japanese style. I think that that's probably uh, from Hawaii is my guess, my very best guess. Let's see. I don't know if I want to talk about, yeah, I guess I could talk about this one. Um, I'm kind of slowing down. And me and Jeremy definitely want to go to dinner tonight because we hadn't seen each other for a couple days. And of course, <laughs> I was like an alligator the one day. I was snappy, wasn't I? <laughs> He's shaking his head yes. He was afraid to say yes. It's okay to say yes. I was snappy like an alligator. And you know, I, I come on these videos and I'm like, hey, I'm so nice. I'm so kind. Well, I am most of the time. But when I'm a bee with an itch, boy, it's not good. I mean, I was obnoxious. I was really bad the other day. It's okay. We all have them. These are, Je and Jeremy forgives me all the time. And he doesn't really ever have a bad day. This is Carnelian. That is uh, Aventurine. That one is in the Moonstone family. Maybe it's Quartz. No, nope, that's Moonstone. Tiger Eye. Amazonite. Quartz. Amethyst. Um... Sit, oops, not citrine, carnelian, and bloodstone. There's a bloodstone. So um, this was great. So I bought this in a very large collection um, from a very dear friend, and I bought a lot of jewelry uh, from this house, and basically this wound up being profit. And the set is 1500 That's what I was asking, but it's the biggest, thickest 14 karat gold scarab set I've ever seen. Solid 14 karat gold, and the um, bracelet matches the necklace, and the bezels are so thick and so chunky. Why I show you this is, when you're looking at these scarab pieces, this is a helpful hint, look at the gold solder seam here. You can see that that's gold, right? It's not gold filled, and look at that these are soldered shut. When you see that these jump rings in between are soldered shut, you're most of the time into 14 karat or 10 karat. But make sure that you see that gold solder seam. See there? Look at the quality of the stones, the quality of the carving, right? So make sure you check out these bezels and then look that these jump rings in between are soldered shut. On gold filled ones, those will be like an open curly cue. You know, they're normally not soldered shut. So because I saw that, I go, oh, that's 14 karat. Then I came, and the color is right. Then I came all the way down here and sure enough, 14 karat. And uh, that thumb screw or thumb clasp with that little bead, that's very old on this uh, clasp. So that's original. And look at how that's soldered together. Notice the construction. Look real close with your loops and make sure that all that is soldered together, like what you're seeing there. That's a gold solder seam. That's a gold solder seam. That's a gold solder seam. That's for sure 14 karat gold solder seam. So that's 14 karat. Very, very heavy. So hopefully you can see what I'm showing you on these solder seams. That's 14 karat gold solder. You'll see this throughout time. So give yourself a little bit of grace. 
That is 14 karat. That is 14 karat. I'm used to seeing it. So give yourself a little forgiveness. This, with the fuzz on it, this is signed 14 karat, 14 KT. That has been on there forever. That was never changed. And you can see through this that those are gold solder seams. These links in between are also soldered shut. I like kind of falling into that information in a video when I didn't think I was gonna talk about 14 karat gold solder seams. And here I am giving you that information. So um, very lovely scarab set. You seldom see the necklaces and this is really heavy gold. That's very, very heavy, very robust gold. So I hope that helps you out on that one. And then we're winding down a little bit because my tum tum's growling. Um, those peanuts were definitely not enough. Those peanuts were definitely not enough for um, satisfying this guy. 14.8 um, grams. This has been inventoried twice. So this was Ruby Lane. I was up to at that point 664 items. Ruby Lane was great to me uh, for retail sales. And uh, I had this out at 3000 uh, And then I generously marked it down to 1550 uh, because the value is definitely here. Size 9, 1 inch across. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, just a, a gigantic citrine that has such an effervescence of sparkle, a brilliance that we normally don't see in citrine, very saturated for color, very um, truly top gem grade citrine in that stone. Doesn't window very much, and windowing is when you tip the stone and see like a window that there's no facets. You don't see that very much in the stone. So windowing is at a minimum, meaning the stone is appropriately and proportionally cut correctly. Okay, uh, this is diamonds at the corner in these kind of looped prongs rather than, you know, little prongs and then completely pave set all over with genuine citrine pave stones all over that 14 karat gold mounting. And look how well crafted this is. Thick gold, not bashful, not afraid. Look at the profile, very thick gold here. Not afraid, not bashful, fully signed on the inside. And I think this is designer. I don't remember who this is, uh, but wow. Now that is a citrine ring. So the person that would consume this would say, I want one citrine ring. I want the finest stone I can buy. And I want it in 14 karat gold. And I want it to be big. So I wasn't afraid at the $3,000 price. Didn't work out, hadn't sold, so I marked it down to the $1,550. Now, based on the gold price, um, I'm definitely not in, not in alignment. It needs to be readjusted. So in fine jewelry, don't be afraid to mark things down and then mark them up with the, again, fluctuation of the gold market. You know, um, and gold has been one of the things that hasn't really been predictable. And I think a lot of people that are consuming it currently are kind of modern prospectors. And I think I think that's kind to say it that way, because it's true. They are spending a certain amount of money because they know that it's going to go up. So it's modern prospecting, like start here and hope we end here. And that's like the prospect of something like its potential um, and I do kind of bank on it being um, one of the most valuable commodities in the world. Uh, I really do. Um, and, you know, I looked at platinum for a long time. Platinum is 15 times more rare than gold, at least 10 times more rare than gold. But they think it's 15 times more rare than gold. And it's a fraction of what gold is at. I think platinum the other day was at 980 an ounce and gold was at like 2450. So why is platinum literally like almost, you know, almost a third of what gold is? I don't quite understand that when it's more rare than gold. Supply and demand. Uh, the demand for platinum right now is not as much as gold. Uh, and that's just the way these things work. But I think we might see a swing in that eventually. So um, those who are putting money in platinum today, hopefully I can watch this video back in two years and go, nah, 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 I was right. Even though I don't do that ever. You know, I just wouldn't do that because the nah, 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 nah is not my, my method. Two cameos. But I think gold will go up. I think, oh yeah, I remember this one. Gold will go up. Um, I really do. And I think platinum is going to enjoy the ride as well. Silver will as well. I mean, let's face it. I think silver was at 27 or 28 the other day. Uh, and I went to the pawn shop yesterday and I filled, no, I went to, on the pawn shop uh, Saturday and I filled up with, um, 
I think I bought maybe eight rings. No, I bought 13 rings and I bought, what else did I buy? And it was very inexpensive. I was surprised uh, because the metal, you know, uh, silver had fallen. So they adjust their prices when the metals fluctuate. Um, I'm glad this didn't sell. (laughs) Here I am being bad in business. I'm glad this one didn't sell. This was an early addition to the antique mall. I'd been there for a while, $450. And you can see the fade on the tag. Had been there for a while. Glad it didn't sell. Look at that. And, um, you know, this is strange for me to say this. I'm not going to sell this. Uh, I'm just going to put her back into my collection. Um, and I would have regretted selling this. And some people have asked me in my videos, have you ever regretted selling anything? Of course I have. You know, um, it's my business to sell. But there have been some things that I let go. And I look back and go, oh, you know, if I only had that back. But then sometimes I find a better version, you know, and then I kind of forget about it. But this one's just unusual. It's set in, um, let's see here. I think this one, someone unfortunately scratch tested it. That was not me. I think this came back at a mix of nine uh, let me think here, 9 and 12 carat. So yeah, this was 9 and 12 carat. 9 on the bezel and 12 on the back, I think. Yeah, I think that's, that was it. Um, and look at the proportions of this cameo. I love that she fills the whole area. Look how big she is. You know, Victorian, 1850s-ish. Yeah, 1850s-ish for the proportions of the face and the hairstyle. Look at those uh, ivy uh, leaves and flowers. The hair tied up, drilled out to look like curls. So basically drilled. That's the way they did early curls. They drilled them to make them look like, you know, look at those tight cannolis. (laughs) She's got tight cannolis. I'm sure I'm going to hear about that in the comments. Uh, I know I am. But she's got six cannolis in her hair. (laughs) I'm hungry. I am absolutely hungry. Jeremy, I'm hungry. I... I know. I said that she has cannolis in her hair. I know. It's it's never good. Jeremy, he's used to it, you know? He just shrugs his shoulders and goes, eh, it doesn't surprise me. So, um, 45 minutes. You all bared with me. Thank you so much. I hope this video made a little bit of sense. I feel like I try to give information, and then when the camera turns on, my brain turns off, you know? This is the last one I'll show you. There's other things in the box but this is the last one I'll share. This one um, was 14 karat gold. Oh, this one was great. Yeah, I loved this one. And this had been there for a while. I think priced at 650. I think very fair by, by today's money. It's in its original box. Uh, this is turn of the century, right at 1900, 1910 um, is the box on this. And I loved this old kind of wallpaper box with these beautiful florals. And um, great coloration, pleated silk top. She's nestled in there. She's been in there a long time. Look at that. So elegant. And she's so kind of ghostly and airy. Just what Art Nouveau is known for. Whiplash, real whiplash, curvilinear hair, wispy, beautiful, elegant neck. Look at her face. Look at that face with the transparency of the eye. And then look at the dragonfly so delicately perched on her shoulder. The front wing, you know, carved with the little the little designs on a dragonfly wing. And then look at the transparency of that back wing. Almost not there. Just like a dragonfly when they land. When their wings are closed up, you can kind of really see them. You know, or when they're um, kind of in line with each other. But look at that, the transparency of that. And I loved the modeledness of where her diaphanous gown was, where this sheer kind of, and look how she kind of just uh, emerges from the cameo. She kind of grows out of that. It, it's beautiful, and I love her. Um, old, old, old. The clasp had been replaced, but 14 karat gold, as you look from behind, but that had been replaced, resoldered at some point, and that's okay, because it's probably just a simple um, C hook, and they didn't feel comfortable wearing her and wanted her to be more secure. Very sizable. Uh, two and, uh, boy, two and a half inch by one and seven five. One and, uh, one and three quarters. So I really loved her and had her out at 650. And, you know, again, so grateful that she didn't sell. Even though I want people to have beautiful things. This one really meant something to me. And I think when I bought this one, I think I paid... Uh, I want to say I paid 85 because they didn't know she was mounted in 14 karat. 
and they, they didn't really respect the carving as much. So I got very lucky. I really love her. There's something about this that really speaks to me and, and speaks to my artist's heart. So let me back up and say one more thing and say, again, trust your intuition and follow your path. Um, I think that's important. I think that's where I want to leave the video today. Um, I thank you all for your kindness. Uh, me and Jeremy are looking forward to seeing you tomorrow on his channel for our first sale. It's buy it now. It's really simple. We'll put in, you know, the chat, the prices. We're going to make it affordable and fun for everybody. Um, I think for invoicing, we're probably going to need like a, a day to two days for invoicing and then a day for packing because this is our first time. So we're entering everybody into PayPal. We're entering everyone in by hand. We're confirming the invoices. Jeremy's in charge of all the logging of all the information. So we appreciate your patience. We really, really do. Uh, and we're looking forward to a really good time. We have a feeling that it's going to be fantastic. So again, trust your intuition. Be kind to yourself. Um, be kind to your neighbors. Um, if you have a mean boss, maybe buy them some candy to make them happy. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to say. Um, mm, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, if you know a nurse and a doctor, tell them that you love them and you thank them for making people healthy and happy. Um, if your mailman is grumpy, tell them you love them just because, um, because they bring your mail every day. I can't think of anything else. Oh, um, one of your servers, leave an extra tip. You know, if you can afford to leave a couple more dollars today, I support you to do that. Um, and I think I leave it at that. So enough of a lecture. <laughs> I really appreciate all of you. Thank you again so much. And um, I love you because you know I do. Mwah.